ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الغمه وجاد في سبيل الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين اما بعد فإن أحسن الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ما بعد. My dear respected brothers and sisters, today we're going to be continuing our series of how could we answer atheism. There are many questions that we are being tackling each and every week, and one of the things that we're trying to do here is trying to answer these questions bit by bit, so people can have a better understanding more confidence in their deen, be able to teach their children how to answer these questions. Today, inshallah, we're going to be going through some series of questions in which that deals with the core aspect of atheism, okay? One of the most things that they, the atheists would tend to ask us, who we believe in God, is could this all of this world, all of this universe, all the creation that exists around us, could it exist? by chance, by chance. So in order for us to answer this question and tackle it in the right way, we have, there is few things that we have to make sure and we have to keep in our mind. Number one, for anything to happen, for anything to exist by chance, there is, you have to have two conditions. You have to have a, a, a time and you have to have a place. You understand? If I want to roll a dice, I need to have a place where I need to roll the dice, and I need to roll these dice in a specific time, right? So therefore, for any chance to exist in this life, for, for this in this world, there have two things that have to exist, time and space, okay? But we're, if we were talking about this whole universe, before it exists, time and place used not to exist. We did not have time and space. So therefore, no chance could happen if you have no, t no, t no time and you have no place. It is just a simple, logical qu answer to anyone who, could ha who comprehends these two, two conditions. Second thing, if we look, there are too many chances have to exist in place in order for us to have a beautiful creation like the earth that we exist in. There ha you have to have the right conditions. You have to have the right, um, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the right conditions for the earth to exist, the right location for, earth, for, the, the, for the earth to be, the right uh, environment for things to exist. In the, it was just recently published. They say in this, all of this universe, there exists more than 700 quantillion planets. I want you to understand this. You have more than 700 Quantillion planets. You know what's a quantillion? It's one with 30 zeros. Okay? Yet, there is only one Earth that exists so far that we have discovered that have reset of conditions. So therefore, so therefore, you know, if, it's, if, if this exists by chance, by chance you'd have other Earths that exist. But yet, we have not found anything that matches the environment the situation, the distance, all of which that, is, that, that we see in the, in the earth. So, so therefore, that argument have no chance whatsoever. Also, for us human beings to exist by chance, it takes, like I said, many chances for this to happen. Let me give you an example. Us human body, what, is, what are we made out of? Made out of organs. We have the heart, we have the lungs, we have the, the, the stomach, we have the muscles, we have the nerves. And what is the, these things are made out of? Each one of these organs, what are they made out of? Made out of tissues, right? And what is these tissues is made out of? Made out of proteins, right? And what is the, the proteins are made out of? They're made out of amino acids, okay? So for one protein to exist by chance, you have to have the right set of amino acids that come together for them to come in a specific place and, and location. And you know what? In, and you have to have the right side of the amino acid because you have, you have two kinds of amino acids. You have left-sided and you have right-handed amino acids. 
So for all of them to exist, one, one, one probability, they say, it takes 634 million billion years for one amino acid to come by existence. Okay? And you know how, how, how old is our Earth? How old is our Earth? 13, 13 billion years. 13, and you guys get this? 13 billion years is how old is our Earth. And yet for this one protein to come by chance, 634 million billion years. So that's many, many, many lives of the Earth that exist already. So subhanAllah, how, how could someone would make, make, make such a claim? The evolutionist, they, they believe in something called spontaneous generation. Let me, let me make you, uh, make you uh, understand what this means. What is spontaneous generation? Meaning at one point, at one point, you have chemicals that came together and from it life came. Okay, at one point, you have chemicals that were together you know, the hydrogen and the oxygen and, the, and the, all of them came together. And then at one point, life existed. Okay? So our, our evidence against them is as follows. Nowadays, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, by the grace of God, we have computers, we have laboratories, we have all the chemicals arranged in all sorts of ways. Why don't you, one of you people, come and bring make this spontaneous generation come together in which that you would bring chemicals into life no one have able to do this so far my dear respect brothers and this and no one will ever will be able to do so because at the end of the day uh, there have to be a creator who, need, who who creates all of these things now people would say well look look easy on me okay what about if this universe was developed over time this is a very important question, guys. And I want your attention here. What about if this universe created over, de developed over time? Meaning that things have evolved slowly over millions of billions of years. You know, for instance, you know, we, we started out, for, you know, uh, as, as molecules in the, in the water, as they claim. And then over time, we became fish. And fish, we became lizards, and from lizards we became amphibians, and you know we became you know all sort all, all kinds of amphibians, and from that we became mammals, and from the mammals came humans and monkeys. That's what they say. Okay. So at the end of the day, what does that mean? Meaning that this all of this universe, okay, is becoming from something that is simple to something that is complex. You guys understand? All of this universe is coming from something simple. To something that is complex okay so by the way scientifically this is wrong scientifically this is wrong because you know all, we, we have a law of thermodynamics the second law of thermodynamics in which that says that all of this universe is going into more randomness more randomness. meaning they say that energy is becoming more random let me give you an example let's say if I have a cup a hot cup of water in front of me okay What's going to happen to it over time? The energy is going to go from the cup to where? To the environment. It's going to become what? Cool. Right? So the same thing applies to all of this universe. Eventually, this universe is going to lose its energy. And that's what, this is, this is not a theory. This is a law. A law, the, a law the second law of thermodynamics. In which they say, this, that, 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 that at, at one point, all of this earth is going to stagnate. It's not going to, because it's going to lose in energy and it's becoming more, more random. And this is, this, is, uh, this is something that scientists believe in, you know. So this is something important we have, we, we have to understand because at one point at, people say, you know, we are becoming, you know, we are, you know, we were simple and we're becoming more, more complex. But it's the opposite. We, are, we were complex and we're becoming more simple based on what even the science would, would claim it, it is. But people say, look, look, look. You know, that's, and that's what the atheists would claim. They said, look, we became, we evolved, we evolved over time. And they said, for instance, and I'm going to give you one example that I want you to remember. We became, you know, more developed over time. For instance, we were simple mammals, like a horse. Okay? And then over time, because the horse wanted to extend his neck, you know, to, to reach the, flea, the, the, the leaves in the upper tree, they became a graffiti. 
And that's what, well, that's what Darwin, seriously, that's what, well, that's what Darwin would claim. They said we were simple mammals, and then over time, because we wanted to reach for higher trees, you know, reaching and continuous reaching, we became graffiti, okay? But now, even the evolutionists now deny that. But they say what, what happened? Because of, because of mutations, DNA mutations, we be, you know, over time, that happens, okay? And I wanted to just prove that using one simple organ system in our body, okay? Let's talk about the heart of the graffiti, okay? I want you to guys to imagine this, and, 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 if, and if I become too complex, I will, I will raise your hand and I will explain it to you. So, the graffiti have almost three meters long neck, okay? You would, have a, you would need a very strong heart to pump the, the blood from the heart to the brain, right? So, they say, I mean, this is, this is fact, so therefore, the heart of the graffiti is almost 11 kilos. Yani, very big. And yani, its length almost 60 centimeters. The heart of the graffiti is almost 60 centimeters. So yani, om, longer than half, than half a meter. And it would it have to have such a strength for it to pump the blood from, from its place to the, to the brain, right? So they said that, okay, this is, we need that. But what happened, let's say if the graffiti lower its neck to, to drink water. All this pressure, you're not fighting against gravity now, right? You guys understand? We're not fun, we are not fighting against gravity when the, when the graffiti lowers its neck to drink water. You guys understand? So what happens now if you have so much pressure now pushing against, uh, pu pushing so much power, it's gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna make the brain explode, right? But what happened? The graffiti have developed systems that would counteract this high pressure. For instance, they have many valves in the, in the vessels from the heart to the brain that, makes, that, that, that slows down the, the blood. And there is a system in the brain of the graffiti, they call it the wonderful network. The scientists call it the wonderful network that act like a sponge to absorb the pressure. And there is another system of valves from the brain of the graffiti to back to the heart of the of, of its uh, back to its heart that also have a, a multiple almost like seven valves that slows down from the blood from going back. So this is look at this complexity, look at this complexity when we're talking about one organ system. What about this is the, this is the circulatory system, the system of the heart. What about the system of the lung? As far as, you know, make sure, making sure that, 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 that she, she breathes the right way. What about the system of the, the digestive system? What about the neurological system? All of this have to go in place and order. And you have to have so many mutations, as they claim, that have to have line up one after another for this to happen. You guys understand? It's, 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 beyond, it's beyond randomness. Nothing could, 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 that is random could occur like this. But you know what? Let's say it happens. Let's say it happens. Wouldn't you need another female like him that have all of these mutations for them to marry each other and have good children that are befitting? So even if we, we agree, we said all of this set of mutations happened over time for, to, the, to the male, you would have the same, the same set of chance that exists on the female for her to be to, to, to have this criteria for them to so they could marry each other and have children. Not even that. I mean, here, here we're talking about just changing one mutation from having a, a, a mammal with a longer neck. What about if somebody would tell you that at one point, at one point, you know, you had one creature, one creature that became a whole different creature all of a sudden. A fish that became a lizard. Look at the amount of mutations and amount of changes that it, that, that it, that it requires. You know, yeah, and you, you have to have, you know, there are so many things that have to go in line as far as random mutations, proteins, design, coordinations that exist with all, among all of the system for something to become perfect. Yeah, and it, it's, this is as my dear respect brother and sister saying, a baby was typing in the computer randomly and all of a sudden 
he got a rich, he, he typed a rich research paper. Wallahi, if you told this to any human being with any, with any rationale, he would say, you are a fool. You are a, how could a baby sitting in front of a computer typing random, uh, 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 randomly would all of a sudden would have a research paper coming all together? It's impossible. So therefore, for such things, things to exist, it's almost impossible. And, and they, what happened is, this is, uh, you know, they say, there is one philosopher that says this. They said, if you wanted to convince people, talk to them like children. If you wanted to, to convince people, talk to them like children. And unfortunately, that's the language that they're using with us. They, they, they talk to us like children, like we are playing with a Play-Doh. You know the Play-Doh? You know, you play, you know, it, 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 at one point you have a snake and then you put legs to it and, it, and now it has legs. And then you add wings to it, now it's flying. And then you, you make its, 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 its neck longer, now it's a graffiti. It's impossible. You are, to, you're, you're, you're used, this is not scientific. This is, this is irrational and no one could comprehend such, such thing to exist. You see? So therefore, you know, for someone to make such, such a claim, they're literally putting science aside and putting all rationality aside, and they're not talking sense based on what science claim it would be. Now, the, the other questions that they would they say, okay, the universe have, they say, the universe have a causer, or something have caused the universe to exist. Why don't this causer have another causer? Meaning someone have, just like we say that we must have a cause for everything, why don't God, would have someone who have caused him to be him and from the beginning, okay? So we say the following. What applies, what the laws and the conditions that apply on the creation does not apply on the creator. What, why do, what do we mean by that? Can someone ask and say, who cooked the cooker? The, 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 the question does not make any sense. Or oh, who painted the painter? It would not make sense whatsoever, you know? And as Muslims, one of the most concrete uh, uh, things that we believe in, part of our aqidah, is the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ Nothing is like him and he is the all-hearing, all-seeing. Meaning nothing can be like God. No human being can be like God, not like God. No human beings would have the abilities that, that, that God have. And you cannot, you cannot say, you know, God have this and we, we, we would have the same thing. No. So therefore, God is unique. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدٌ He is unique. Nothing is like Him. So, and the other thing that people would say, you know, what about, for instance, you know, something have created God and God, someone else created Him. And, and this sequence is ending, is endless. Okay, the, this this theory they saw they, you know they call it the endless sequence of event, you know, in which that, you know, God was created by another God, and this God was created by another God, and this God is created by another God, and it's endless. Okay, as if we're saying we are making a set of dominoes, okay, and no one have dared to touch the very first domino. If no one moved the very first domino, would the last domino would would would, would change? No, because you would need you know, pretty much permission from each one of every person for anything to happen. So therefore, you would have to have person a starter from the beginning. No matter how long the sequence would be, you would have to have a, 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 a person who started everything. Otherwise, nothing would take into effect whatsoever. Now, another question. Can there be more than one creator? Can there be more than one creator. And for instance, we say, yes, there is one God that have created everything, but yet there is another God who could have created another thing too. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have taught us in the Quran, the final revelations to all of humanity. <clears throat> and if there was more than one God in this universe, there will be mischief and destruction in this earth. Why? Because if you have God number one, opposing God number two, they were, you're gonna have you're gonna have constant fight. If the God number one wanted to create a moon, and God number two said, "Well, there is no moon," there's gonna be chaos. People are gonna be fighting, you know. So therefore, when you have more than one well, you will have difference of opinion, and you will have there are gonna be disagreement, and you're gonna have disagreement. You're going to have fighting. But even more important is this: 
when you have more than one God, eventually you're asking for this God to be weak. Why is that? Let me give you an example. Let's say you have God number one and God number two. And God number one have a secret. Can God number one keep the secret from God number two? If he can, then this God, this, this God is not all-knowing. God number two. And if, and if he can't, then he's a weak God. He can't keep a secret. You see? So at the end of the day, you're asking for a weak God. Not even that. When you have more than one God, what happens? You are, as, as you're saying, this God is an installation of multiple, of multiple beings. Right? When you have more than one God, you have more than one will. And as if you have, you, this God, God in, is murakkab or is being installed with different beings. And anything that is installed, anything that is put together, it's, it's weak. Because if, you, we, if we need to put anything together, and if, if it's a missing a piece, then it's weak. Right? If a building would need, for instance, 20 bricks. If it's missing a brick, it'll become weak. Because it's in need of something. And if you're in need of something, then you eventually you're asking for weakness. You see? So, again, when you have multiple, more than one God, eventually you're asking or you're, you're making God into a weak being. Now, okay, you, we have a God, they say. Why do we need a religion? Why do we need a religion? So, all atheists, all of them, actually not all atheists, all human beings, they agree that the goodness of morality, right? Meaning that lying is bad, being trustworthy is good, being nice is good, being humble is good, being generous is good. All of us, all human beings agree that, right? So, and we all agree that none of these things are exist from the physical world. Meaning that evolution would not have caused these things. Why? Because, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not, one of the characteristics of evolution, because if, for instance, if we are just here without no, with no morality, we will be eating each other. You know, at, the evolutionists, they believe in something called the survival of the fittest. The survival of the fittest, meaning that the, the stronger the person, he is deserving to be, to be alive. So therefore, if I get a chance to get rid of you, I will get rid of you. If I get a chance to, take, to steal from you, I will steal from you. If I get a chance to, to take your food, I will take your food. And that's what evolution is all about, meaning that the survival of the fittest, the stronger you are, the most, the, the most fit you are, the most more, more likely that you're going to live. So therefore, with evolution, you would have no morality. There is no, there is no exist. You can't have morality. And then, and then out of this physical world, out of this physical world, you could not gain morality. Why is that? Can you see, if we open, if we look underneath the microscope, if we look at, and into the atoms and the electrons, would you see any signs of morality? Would you see, would you, would, can you make morality in the lab? No. The morality is, is something foreign to this world and the only way for morality to come is have to come from a divine being. The value, the value of human beings, of how much a human being valued is based on what? How close are you to the divine that who have created you? How close are you to the purpose that divine have created you for? And the more you are, the more you are closer to that, the more valuable you will become. For instance, have you ever heard someone would say, this mountain is trustworthy? It's, it's pathetic. You know, or this planet is, does not lie. Nothing that is not physical can, be, can have a higher value because of morality. The only thing that have value because of morality is human being, us, you know? And the way we gain this by following what the divine would ask us to do, you, you see? So therefore, you know, this divine gave us this morality and from this morality we will gain value. Why not morality, they say, why not morality have reached us from previous nations? Like for instance, you know, you know our, the people before us, they, they, they had they had a set of morals, and we inherited this this morality, these morals, and the people before them have another set of morals, and it, eventually this morality kind of came to us gradually over time from generation after generation. Same answer almost. So the thing is, 
my dear respect brothers and sisters, what our brain is made out of? It's made out of, for instance, you know, nerves, uh, water, fat, protein, cells. So can these cells again, can, can, they, can they know good and bad? Can these cells will tell us that it's wrong to kill or, or, or it's wrong to cheat? Or, is wrong, or, the, the, or what is wrong and what is bad? No, of course not. Because these things are physical, have no brain, have no conscious soul, and, and, no, and, and would not tell us what is right and what is wrong. So therefore, our brain have nothing to do with the morality because it's made out of from, from, from this physical world. The same materials that the sand in this earth is made out of. The same materials. The sand. So therefore, you know, if someone would claim that we have, claim, that we have gained we have gained, if someone would, would claim that we have gained uh, 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 morality from the previous generation, I would tell them, look, look at the Nazis. If the Nazis were right, then we have inherited whatever they, they claim it would be. But no, everyone have know that what the Nazis believe is wrong. And this not became something, this did not spread. What? Because people, naturally speaking, they know this is wrong. From the, from the, the fitra, the, you know, the, their natural being told them that this is wrong. Now, what is the relationship between, a question people would say, what is the relationship between morality and religion? What is the relationship between morality and religion? So, religion, my dear respect brothers, and this is something we need to understand, and we have to teach our children this. Religion, it, show, it shows us the way of life. The religion, without religion, the painting is only going to be dark and white with no colors. The food would not have any taste without any religion. So therefore, we have to have a religion that shows us how to live our life. You know, religion is to tell us how to, how should we, this is, religion is to tell us how to treat our, our wives. Religion would tell us how to treat our neighbors. Religion would tell us how to treat, t treat men. Religion teaches us how to treat women. Religion, religion teaches how to treat our children. So therefore, yani religion tell us the goal of our life. The religion will tell us the goal why we exist. The religion tell us what, what's going to happen after death. And therefore, without religion, we have no purpose. Ibn al-Qayyim, he have a very beautiful saying. He said, no happiness exists in this world if it wasn't of the prophets that God have sent to this earth. No goodness. No goodness in all of this earth if, if it wasn't for the prophets that God have sent to this universe. Why? Because literally, if it wasn't for the prophets of God who taught us the right from the wrong, we would be literally acting like animals. We would be eating each other. We'd be stealing from each other. We would be, we would be harming each other because, you know, why is it wrong? Why is it wrong to kill, to, to, to kill millions of people? What's wrong with that? People, I mean, what, what, what's the consciousness for us to think this is wrong? No. What is, what, why is it wrong to harm a, a disabled man? Why? Or why is it wrong to take his, his wallet? Because the thing is, oh, if you ask any human beings, this is naturally belief this is wrong. Because this is part of our nature and part of our beings. So with this, my dear respect, brothers and sisters, inshallah, every week, we're going to be, I'm going to be going very, in speedy, very speedy um, um, course to answer all these questions so we'll be able to have a better understanding of how to tackle these questions bit by bit in order for us to teach ourselves and inshallah te teach our surrounding. If I said anything that is good is indeed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet. If I said anything that is appropriate from myself and the shaitan, Zakum wa khalli hushtu tamaikum subhanahu wa hamdikum wa astaghfiruk wa natubu alayk wa al-asr inna l-insana lafi khusr illa al-lazhi dina ma'alun salihatu wa tawasu bil-haqqi wa tawasu bil-sabr. Zakum wa khair. Is there any questions by the way? Anyone? Good inshallah. Zakum wa khair.